Hello, this is Mark, and welcome to another one of my videos. Thanks to all my subscribers for watching and being a subscriber. And if you're not, go ahead and feel free to click subscribe. And thank you. Um, I'm going to turn my Chicago Electric Harbor Freight welder, 90 amp AC welder, which uh, basically runs on 110, 110 volts, and uh, welds in AC. I'm going to convert it to a DC welder using the tips and uh, guidance of uh, Matt here on YouTube. If you search for converting the uh, Harbor Freight welder from AC to DC, you're bound to find some of Matt's videos. There are quite a few of them and they're very helpful. And so based on what he did, I'm going to try to model my uh, retrofit after what he did, he also answered one of my questions that I posted on one of his uh, Facebook videos. Okay, first up in the parts is this giant blue Mallory capacitor. It isn't very heavy. I see it's got a small little dent in it. I hope that doesn't hurt anything. Uh, might have happened in shipping. This was shipped in, in an envelope similar to this one. So hmm, that could have happened in the, in the shipping. But anyway, it's a 21,000 microfarad and 100 volt DC rated max surge of 125 volts DC and in this envelope there are three uh, resistors that I'll use to bleed the system down and we'll open that up later and here I've got the uh, the heart of the whole thing which is this uh, rectifier, it's an AC to DC rectifier. This is a three phase, meaning it has three AC inputs in the back to DC in the front. They are marked on both the schematic diagram and on the post themselves, positive, negative, so you don't get that mixed up. And for uh, regular two phase AC, you can just pick any two, any pair of these that you want and it'll go through the diodes and end up being positive and negative on this side. I think this was seven dollars and some change delivered. Okay and then I've got a hodgepodge of other parts including some six gauge wire. I've got six feet of that should be enough. I've got some uh, quarter inch copper tubing uh, connectors or joints and I'm going to use those as uh, crimp connectors. Okay, got four of those for crimping any of the wires together and I'll also use some solder with that to hold them. Got uh, miscellaneous flat washers, lock washers, and bolts and nuts to mount the rectifier. Bolts and nuts to connect the wires together using some uh, connectors like these for six gauge wire. Got a couple of packages of those, a couple of packages of washers to go with this as well. So all in all, it's about maybe $40 worth of parts, but there'll be some parts left over, I'm sure. And basically the whole reason I'm converting this over is uh, first of all, the weld quality of the AC. And I, I plan on doing some AC welding in a few minutes here to do a before and after. But the convenience of having a 110 plug on the end, meaning that I can take this virtually anywhere and plug it in, uh, even a thick uh, rugged extension cord will handle the, uh, the amperage this is pulling. And instead of using 220, 110. So it makes it more versatile for me. And to have it weld in DC instead of AC, I'm hoping, as the videos have shown online, that it welds much better in uh, DC mode with the electrode or the wand negative and the clamp positive. That's what we're going after and that's known as a DCEN, uh, direct current electrode negative setup. The welder settings are on maximum. Wire speed is at seven. Currently the machine has 0 0.035 diameter wire in it flux core wire. 
035. Okay, so I'm gonna do a line on here using the AC mode. Okay, there was 12 seconds of welding. Okay, well there's what the weld looks like. You can see it's kind of globby. Not really much of a, of a continuous weld to it. There is some splatter that's stuck onto the rotor. Some of it's coming off, most of it's sticking. So that's what the AC welder has done. Okay, I've got the holes marked to drill to bolt the rectifier inside the cover. Okay, well basically scratch what I told you about putting it on the inside. I've decided this, is the, this was the plan all along actually. So I've spared you the mistake of showing you that I was gonna put this on the inside. So pretend that didn't happen. And now I've got these little fin pieces all over the uh, garage floor here. But this is where I want to bolt up the rectifier is on the outside. Okay, the rectifier is mounted. That's a little bit crooked. It's not exactly straight. Uh, if there's anything not perfect about this project, it's because I'm not perfect myself. But anyway, I did bend these tabs down a little bit here. Let some more air flow. So I'm hoping air flows around it from the fan from the inside out, but also I mounted it vertically because the fins are vertical, heat rises, so it might conduct the air in, in a flow up across the fins in, an, in a vertical motion to cool this rectifier should it get warm. Okay, well, in order to get the motor mounted back here and put the screws back in, I took off the top screws off the uh, back here to lower this down, bend it back down gently. Also, when drilling the hole, uh, you have to be aware that you don't want to go through the hole and right into your transformer coil. So, Okay, a little progress update. I've spliced the wires using just some uh, lamp cord that I had laying around. So that uh, only took a few inches to extend for the blue wires because they're just not long enough to reach once, uh, once the motor's been put on the back side of the unit, which I did. And I'll show you here. What I plan to do is buy another piece of uh, metal and uh, you make like a, a bracket back here, drill a couple of holes and put a metal uh, brace back here, so to speak, to kind of protect the motor from any rear, rear end bumps or something. But I can definitely feel the air being pulled in around my hand through the grill back here. And inside, yeah, there's a nice airflow now. In fact, I've got some uh, cobwebs wiggling down here in the bottom, the base of the unit. So I know this is going to draw more air in. What a mess this has turned out to be. There's screws everywhere down here and here. They go to the covers. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm just going to pick it up as best I can for now so I can get the door closed and pick up where we left off, hopefully tomorrow. Okay, progress update. I've had to remove the collar here from the uh, feed cable so I could remove it and took the two screws out of the front so I could tilt this forward. And I gently had to unplug a couple of wires one at a time to go uh, for this black wire that feeds the gun, which was on the other side of the circuit board. I unplugged first this wire, the white one, then the black one down here. And they're plugged in pretty solid, but if you're gentle and don't break the, break the circuit board, you can get it out. So I, I, I removed those one at a time so that I could swing the wire from this side of the circuit board to this side of the circuit board so that now I can get at it to uh, cut it and make my connections. When it was on this side of the circuit board, it was very difficult to even reach it. So that's what I came up with. Very gentle though. There are a lot of short wires attached to the circuit board that go to different things that don't give you a lot of length. So you don't have a lot of pulling room here. And you could easily damage anything on this circuit board if you're not careful. So now I've got this exposed for the gun. Down here is the wire for the clamp. So it's time to do some cutting and splicing. Okay, well, time for another progress update. I've got the rectifier connected up with the bolts and the connectors crimped onto the wires, the six gauge wire, which maybe four gauge would be better. 
It's very close to the same size as what is in the unit, but I've got the AC wires feeding the AC part of the rectifier. The DC comes out. Uh, for instance, here's the positive, which goes directly into the wire down here. It goes out to the clamp. And as you can see, I've also got the, maybe you can see, the capacitor wire comes down around and takes a corner and also feeds straight in the direction of the clamp wire. And the electrode negative uh, goes to the gun. That's this wire. And here's one from the capacitor. Ties into the short little pigtail wire that goes up to feed the, uh, the gun uh, electricity, the negative that we're looking for. So everything's wired up. I've got the capacitor strapped down with these zip ties through holes that were drilled in the top. I also drilled a couple of holes for the capacitor wires to go down through big enough so that the wires aren't really touching the outside edges of the holes. I'm not worried about any uh, shortages or anything like that from that. So it looks like I'm ready to start buttoning it up and seeing what we have for a welder now. Well, I said earlier in the video, I believe, that I'm not perfect. Here's a sign of it. I actually uh, swapped the covers side for side. They're on the wrong sides now. So I've got the extra part of the uh, side covers sticking out in the back now, which looked odd right off the bat and well it might help protect the, the motor until I get a bracket across here but and that means the front is uh, just smooth all the way across now maybe that exposes the buttons to uh, damage if it comes up against something on the front so that's something I got to be aware of from now on as you can see the front cover doesn't uh, line up with anything anymore because it's back here now so it's too late to switch the covers around now because the rectifier is mounted on the other side. So uh, another thing I want to point out is I bought six feet of number six gauge wire. And right there, that about two inches is all I've got left of the six foot piece of wire. Let's uh, get to the moment of truth and see what happens. I've got the unit plugged in. The setting is on maximum amperage. The wire feed speed is set at number five let's turn on the power and see if uh, it blows up first of all power is on the fan is blowing air through the unit i can see the little pieces of grass and stuff on the ground around the unit moving so uh, clamp positive electrode negative okay well upon first inspection here's the DC weld, here's the AC weld. There is noticeably less splatter on the piece, but the weld, now that I've uh, wire brushed it off, looks about the same as the AC. Oh, it did spark. Did you see that? I did not pull the trigger, and there was a spark but from the capacitor, but now it's gone. Well, it's definitely welding more consistent. There's still fewer uh, little BBs, splatter stuck around on the piece. And the welds themselves look to be more continuous. Again, weld speed is on five. Uh, I'm gonna try to turn it up to six. Okay, let's try six. Well, folks, as you were watching the weld right there uh, and it quit, that is where the rectifier blew its guts, apparently. Uh, it did get very warm. Um, I tried measuring voltage from the, uh, the lines, of AC to DC. Uh, I was getting very little with it hooked up. I unhooked the wires from the rectifier and on the low setting, I was getting 21 volts AC on the AC side, nothing on the DC. And on the high setting, I was getting 27 volts across the two wires uh, when, as long as they weren't on the rectifier itself. But anything to do with the rectifier, uh, especially uh, this leg to this leg, and also this leg to this leg, which is, this is the positive up here. Um, 
it uh, is, is showing a short. And just for the sake of the video, here is the uh, weld, the DC weld that was in progress before it crapped out right, right here. Um, it doesn't look that bad, really. I mean, there's some spaces here where the wire feed wasn't quite doing what it should. And I do have the wire feed set, the tension set very low so that the motor will slip. Uh, the rollers will slip instead of bogging the motor down. I'm trying to preserve the motor that way. Well, gang, while I'm waiting for the mailman to drop off the new uh, bridge rectifier, uh, I want to show you some uh, other modifications I've done besides putting the fan on the outside. I took this piece of angle steel, flattened it out a bit. It still has a little bit of roundness to it, but drilled holes in each end after I bending them uh, to fit and put bolts through. And now I've got a nice secure bracket to protect the back of the, the unit, the motor. And also with the help of Mini Thor, I flattened out the louvers on uh, what would be near the fan, the middle, and since these are backwards now, this used to be the, uh, the back, but now it's the front. So I flattened out the back two louver panels, and just leaving the front open so that the air will have to sweep past the main uh, transformer and other parts before it can escape out the, uh, the front louvers here. Hey, look everybody, it's the mailman. Time to get the new part and put it in the machine. All right, check it out, peeps. Mailman was just here. Dropped off the new AC to DC rectifier. This one is a 150 amp single phase, not the uh, three phase. There it is. And a nice metal heat sink on the back. We've got markings for uh, the diagram. 150 amp, 1600 volt rating. Here's where the AC goes in. You can see the little squiggly lines on there, at least I can. And on the front, we have markings for negative and positive. So let's put it in, see what happens. And I've also got my 160 ohm wire wound resistor in place to bleed off the capacitor between welds. We'll see how that holds up. So I think it's ready to button it up and try it out. And let's see what kind of a weld we can get. Let's uh, put the machine on maximum. I've got wire feed set to, to number five. Again, max setting, wire feed number five. And that doesn't look too bad to me. So the weld seemed to be very consistent. That's what the weld looks like, maximum setting and wire feed number five. Let's give it another go. Okay, we're back on the welder project here. And after welding, again, this is with 035 wire. Even this uh, big piece of metal here, that was just a scrap metal piece, uh, got really warm to the touch. And, and an engineering friend of mine suggested that I used aluminum, make a big aluminum heat sink for this side for the, uh, the bridge rectifier to dissipate the heat better. So I'm gonna remove this plate and replace it with this piece of aluminum. It's a little dirty, I gotta clean it up, but, and also I gotta cut it to size, but looks like it'll size up pretty good. Okay, so what I've done here is I removed the panel, of course. I removed the other block and separated the bridge rectifier from it. Cut this pretty much to size, fits pretty good. Drilled a couple of holes. Then I took the cutting wheel and I cut all of these fins away to give this panel more access to the air going by to cool it from the inner fan before it exits out these fins. Okay, so sparing you most of the gory details, I got the, the bolts back in. 
got the plate mounted. It's got plenty of breathing room behind it. And so let's give it a test drive and see what it does. I'm going to use 030 from now on, but this is all the store had at the time. And I'm thinking it's just a little too thick for this machine, for a 120 volt machine. Maybe it'd be okay for a 220 that the amps could go up higher, but as soon as this spool runs out, I'm going back to 030, no more 035. Off. Towards the end of it, it uh, wasn't looking too bad. Yeah, looks like I advanced a little too fast, but it is melting good. It's, uh, yeah, it's putting out good heat. This is still plenty warm. Let me check the plate. Okay, the aluminum heat sink plate on the bridge rectifier is a bit warmer than it was, but still I can leave my hand right on it. A big difference over what it was before. And I've got good airflow coming out of the machine. So I'm not worried about it overheating anymore. That seems to have done the trick. It's really spreading the, the heat throughout that aluminum plate. Okay, well all in all, I've got some good melting going on at the end of the gun. Um, a little more practice is needed, obviously, to get a good weld, a good bead going, but uh, it does seem to have enough amperage to uh, melt even this 035 wire. Um, for me, it's important that I used a 120 volt welder that I can plug in in any outlet, and, and that's why I did this conversion. And that's why I started with this AC welder in the first place, is because I could plug it into a regular 120 outlet. This one, again, is only rated up to 90 amps, and the bridge rectifier I've got in it now is rated for up to 150 amps. And so far, especially using that aluminum heat sink, it seems to be holding up very well. And it seems to be a, a solid product now that should last for quite some time, I hope. Uh, anyway, comment away. Tell me what you think.